Hello everyone, and welcome back to One Off Let's Plays, the series where I show off games in my collection and stuff that I wouldn't actually make a full proper LP of depending on the genre and stuff. And that's a rather long intro, I'm gonna have to work on that. But today I am showing off a childhood game that I played a lot as a kid for the PS1, Sledge Storm. Pretty much a game with snowmobiles and then you race along like snow and stuff with awesome music and it's just really awesome and I felt like showing it off today. I don't see why not, so let's just jump straight into this, shall we, before the demo starts, because, I mean, demos are always annoying when they're trying to do an intro and stuff like that. Although, what am I going to do? I'm actually going to do a championship, just uh, basically showing you off, you know, like, the main career of the game, but only part of it, because doing a full LP of this would be rather boring, as it's simple. I race through the track, and it's the same thing all the time, you know. I think it would be pretty boring to watch as a full series. Plus, this game also has a badass soundtrack, and you'll see what I mean later and stuff like that, but still. I don't know what I'm going to pick, though, um... Because, to be honest, the characters don't really feel that different, if you ask me. They're all just kind of the same people, but with different catchphrases and stuff. Sure, their stats are different, but due to the physics in the game, they all feel rather similar. But, you know, to be original, I'll be this guy here. I don't see why not. Too sweet to be beat! Oh yeah, I also forgot, this is the 90s, so of course, um, it's gonna have very, very cheesy dialogue in places, but never mind. But we start with an upgrade, upgrade price of, uh, $1,000. <laughs> That's quite a lot, as you, you know, you get more money with more races, you win and stuff like that, but I think we're alright for now, so we're just gonna move on to this one, which is... Oh, is that? Oh yeah, it's the Foggies, isn't it? So, like, this is basically... The first out of the four tracks. There's four tracks in total. I'm going to try and cover all of them coming in first place because that's the only way you can qualify on this, unfortunately. Like, you can't come third or anything. No, you have to place third in order to, the, to you know, get past them things. But, wow. My gosh. Okay, so I remember being at the age of, like, Plymouth Egg. How long ago was this? This game was, like, in 1999. So, I would have been, like, Five years old, I think? Well, actually, no, I would have been three, actually, but I remember I didn't really play this game when it first came out or anything. I played it when I was five years old on the PlayStation, and this game is a ton of fun. Usually, I don't tend to like a lot of racing or sports games particularly, but this one actually is pretty decent, mainly because it was actually one of the first um, snowmobile races for gaming, I believe, on the PS1 and stuff like that. Plus it also, like I said earlier, has a really cool soundtrack because um, for once in a game and that, they actually have uh, soundtracks from an actual band. So instead of it being, you know, by this famous video game composer and stuff like that, some of the songs like you're hearing right now um, is by Rod Zombie. Um, I forgot what it's called. Hot Rod or something? I don't know really. But it was a popular song in the 90s anyway with like this kind of music. I suppose you could say that's why I like the soundtrack to Sledgestorm. Because this, the whole soundtrack pretty much defines the 90s. Like, this is the sort of BGM that we heard, you know, sort of back in the day and stuff like that. Topped with great games like this, too. Even though this is a sports game... Well, it's, yeah, I suppose it is a sports game, really, and that. I like how this game is actually pretty familiar to another racing game that I'm particularly fond of for the N64, Beetle Adventure Racing. Where in Beetle Adventure Racing, basically, how you win on that, and the part that made it a lot of fun to me, was the shortcuts. You know, given the fact that you could part, instead of taking, like, the normal route, you could basically just take this other route that led you to this other place, and it was just satisfying, you know? Instead of just taking the normal route, finding all these new discoveries on way to just overlap everybody, and it has it here in Sledstorm as well. And that's the main thing you got to do to win, because if you just take the normal routes, you're probably not really going to get anywhere. Also, oh dear, I nearly fell off then. <laughs> you, can, you can also do, like, tricks and stuff in this, and I do it sometimes, but sometimes I don't, because in championship mode, at the end of the day, if you want to pass, you just got to place first, really. And if you muck up a trick, if it goes on for too long, or if you pull a really odd trick, um, that can cause you to fall out, and, you know, you have to get back on your sled and stuff like that. It's not like Road Rash, though, where you have to run back to, um, your bike or vehicle or whatever it was, you know, in order to start again. As they just instantly start back there, but still. I actually came first by talking like that, wow. 
Oh, so I love this result screen music. I believe that was composed by uh, Jeff Van Dyke, and my god, is that a satisfying result scream right there? <laughs> it just makes you feel like, you know, it's the end of going through a wild ride through, like, snowmobiles and stuff. I don't know, I just dig it, really. <laughs> Let's see, so I get um, $1,000 for coming first, meaning now I'm at four, $4,598. It's pretty weird saying dollars, considering to me it's pounds, but still, uh, never mind. Okay, so, you know, I'm actually going to show off, like, one thing I can buy in this. Um, but which one to go for? Which one should I get? If I have, like, 4,000, um... Hmm. I need to find something that's sort of cheapish, but not quite. Let's see, got a light chaser, scrapite brakes, sports tune-up. Uh, temporary improved performance. You know, I'm going to buy one of those just to see what difference it makes, and that's it, pretty much. I suppose you could say, every time I clear a race, I just buy one thing. And now we're on to Sparkle and Shine by Econ Econoline Crush. Which actually has a throttle mix, so hopefully I won't get copyrighted for it, but we'll see, considering how YouTube is nowadays. <laughs> oh boy. I also don't mind the visuals here either. Now sure, it's just a PS1 and everything looks blocky, but this is 1999. Imagine yourself, you know, being a kid in 1999, pretty much when the PlayStation was the next gen gaming system, you know, in 1995. And then seeing this is pretty impressive. Much like being blown away by Rayman 2's graphics on the N64, you know? It's sort of the same here and stuff like that, but still. I might be talking about the soundtrack a lot and stuff, but, you know, sometimes I want to avoid copyright reasons and stuff like that, depending on what happens, because I am not too sure really, and oh boy. <laughs> I suppose that leads me on to another thing, actually. Even though this game is a lot of fun, I really like this game a lot, really. But it is difficult. Like, a lot. Mainly due to the physics and all that. Although, honestly, I'd imagine that the physics would be like this, because, I mean, we are in snowmobiles, you know, and uh, we have to basically just go past like obstacles and that with all these icy snowy physics and that so you know you can expect the controls to feel slippery and stuff but you know it's just sometimes it can be annoying sometimes it can be a good or bad thing and that's one I don't particularly mind it as it means you got to get used to how the world is around you, you know with all these physics and turns which I'm clearly not very good at considering I just crashed right there but still oh boy The points in that in this game, even though I said you don't really particularly have to do tricks, um, you can if you want, and it gets you more points, but I think it's for the later ones, where that basically involves nearly falling off, good grief. Doing certain tricks in order to get first. I also like how when you hit people, they like make these weird grunts and stuff. Because <laughs> the dialogue in this is very 90s as well. Just, you know, the, the, this game is pretty much just the 90s in a nutshell, really. Which makes sense, because, I mean, that's when pretty much this game came out and things like that. I believe this is only released, like, for the PlayStation. Like, this wasn't on the N64 or anything. I reckon this could have worked well for the N64, but I'm not too sure. And what a blimmin' carnage this is. Bloody hell. <laughs> Take out three of them at the same road, do I? Okay, fair enough. Oh, boy. There are sometimes, though, some, um places where I've noticed like that jump that I did back there where you have to like pull the analog stick back quite a bit in order to get some altitude you know in order to make it and stuff like that so there is some strategy involved and that's what I like about races you know basically not where you are just racing around a track again and again and again because it's like that also with like famous kart races you know like the Mario Kart series and CTR crash team racing and stuff you know it's all about pretty much how you use your items, you know, the shortcuts you take, your power sliding techniques and stuff. You know, it's the same with Sledstorm pretty much, except obviously we're not using items, but still. We're using the shortcuts to our best advantages and stuff like that. That's what I don't mind in most races really, but also, I don't know if I'm going to come first in this considering of how bad I am doing. <laughs> Is that the moment I am third and things are not going so smooth. Also there's a bear in the background, oh boy. <laughs> Jesus, though. 
This game though is not as hard as games like Road Rash because I mean, well, that game pretty much you had to place third or higher in order to qualify and there was like, God knows how many races, I forget to name like the exact number of them, but oh boy, it was a lot, that's for sure. It would be cool if I can actually get first in this bit, but something tells me that I won't. Nope, unfortunately not. Uh, and look at my <laughs> reaction to it as well. Also, my name's Bob? Oh, it's Bob. Is that Bob or does that just say 808? I'm not too sure, really. Actually, my name's uh, Geo. Okay, cool. You get three tries, basically, if you fail a cup, and then you try again. If you fail that, you just start all the way from the beginning and stuff like that. But I can actually concentrate this time because you've seen what the heck's going on. So, you know what? I'm going to cut ahead till I got first in this lap. Uh, along the side with highlights as well. Oh damn it, I've completely forgot about this shortcut, oh my god. <laughs> Just following this orange guy here. I suppose you can say it's another thing that I also like. As well as taking the shortcuts, you know, to add a bit of challenge, the computers know of these shortcuts as well. So it's not just the case of, oh, I'm gonna take this shortcut while everyone else doesn't. No, no, no. They know it too. So half the time if you follow them and that, you know, you are just gonna find all sorts of shortcuts in this game. Holy cow. Ah, oh, damn it. Quickly. <laughs> As you can see here, even through the second round, whoops, the game gets pretty difficult. <laughs> Considering the fact that, you know, just the computers just, they just catch up to you. It doesn't matter how fast you're going or something, they will just always find ways to catch up to you and try to win the race. Also, I went this way because for some reason I keep... Oh no! Quick! Oh man, that was really close then. <laughs> Because of my landing position, that almost like made me fall off, and that would have been painful for both me realizing that I lost and the player. So you know that's kind of cool. Okay, so I believe we've got one more round off this. Also, we're at 16 minutes. God damn it! How long does time go when recording? <laughs> oh boy. Plus, I have like uh four over for like four thousand yeah, dollars. That's pretty sweet. All right. So what one should I get now? A more powerful engine, which costs fifteen thousand pounds good lord okay we are definitely not going for that I'm gonna go for something a bit cheaper there's up a huge rooster tail of snow behind your said um yeah let's see why not I suppose we just press progress on with that I also like the navigation of this also nowhere now oh, awesome I love that song especially by eco no line crush Cause that sounds really sweet seriously like the soundtrack in this game I, I probably can't really show you the full tracks due to copyright and things um, with YouTube and stuff like that, but you should try and listen to these tracks like in your spare time, seriously, if like, if you just want to know what the 90s was like back then, like what kind of music there was, this is the sort of stuff that was pretty much in games and music in general, which if asked me is really, really awesome. Still, as I was saying though earlier and stuff, with like having to buy upgrades and things like that, you know, I like the addition of that, and the fact that the navigation to it is pretty simple. You know, you don't really have to navigate through tons and tons of menus just to get an upgrade and agree to it and stuff like that. As, um, that's literally just, it brings you to it instantly before you start the next race. Which I just find extremely accessible, because, you know, there are times like that in some games, Nat, where I'm like, I want to upgrade, but, oh my god, i got to go to this menu, and i got to wait for it to load and stuff. No, 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 this one pretty much just does it all for you. Which makes it a hell of a lot easier knowing what the heck's going on, you know what I'm talking about? So I don't know why I'm not falling under this. I suppose my snowmobile is too fast, but I am not too sure, really. Never mind, though. Also, the snow upgrade I got uh, pretty much doesn't really do anything, but it sure as hell makes the presentation look a lot better. Because now I've got, like, snow kicking up from the back of my snowmobile. So that's pretty sweet. <laughs> oh boy, though. Looking at it now. <laughs> the snowmobile kick kicking up due to like uh, the pixels and stuff on the PlayStation and that. It looks a lot like... Oh my goodness me, what the heck? <laughs> looks a lot more more like Minecraft or so, you know, like when you sort of like break something and it just breaks into millions of pixels. Reminds me of that now. But oh boy. God damn it, though, I do love this song. <laughs> I like all the sl uh, songs in Sled Storm, really. There's not really one of them that I hate or anything, because, I mean, it's just got that 90s vibe, you know, it makes me feel like a kid again, I guess, listening to this type of music. 
There's not much sure. I guess it's just preferences at the end of the day. <laughs> also, even though the boys that don't know this is cheesy, some of their lines in that when they like fall off their sleds are pretty not awesome to hear. In fact, another thing which is completely shocked me really, and I never <laughs> knew this before. But um even though I played this like at the age of five, this game here in Britain, um I believe in I don't know, in America it might be rated E, but over here in the UK, like it, it's rated eleven plus. Mainly because of the word god damn it. <laughs> I don't know how that makes any sense, but still. I mean, I suppose it does back in the day, because... Oh dear. Well, that didn't go so smooth and stuff like that, but still. Because, I mean, you know, this is sort of like back in the day where I had to be really careful of what they were saying and stuff. But it gets sort of like virtually a teen rating just for the word, God damn it! I don't know, it just freaking amuses me. As there's like, there's no swearing. That's literally the only curse word they say. God damn it. Which isn't even a curse word, really, if you ask me, but no, still. Also, the time limit is really pointless in this. <laughs> I've just noticed that, because I mean, some races, like Super Hang On, I don't know if you could even call Super Hang On, hang on a racer, really. Probably more like um, just an actual arcade, seeing how far you can get and stuff like that, but. You know, because like the time limit on that depletes and you have to keep collecting checkpoints in order to carry on with the race and stuff like that. But, you know, this one's just, there's kind of a timer, but it's, it doesn't really do anything. It just makes you realise how long you've been on the track for. There's like no sense of challenge for it at all, really. But fortunately, you know, the sense of challenge is the computers and like the drifting mechanics and stuff like that. And I just approve of it as a whole. Also, I've got 50 points. That just shows you how awesome I am at tricks in this game. <laughs> Given the fact that I've only got 50 of them. Also, can I get that rabbit? Ah, damn it. I like how when you hit the rabbit, you basically just get like a whole bunch of points. It's kind of cruel, but you know what? It's worth it. Because <laughs> for points and stuff like that. Also, I'm on the third lap, so hopefully I don't screw up here. Because all these shortcuts pay out big time. But, oh my lord, I'm at 100 points now so far. You know, it actually went pretty smooth this time around, and I'm happy with that. Sorry for that silence, I just love hearing this track at the end of everything. Seriously, more games need to have this track at the end of a race. It's just so satisfying to hear, you know what I'm talking about? Oh boy. We'll see, how, many, how much money are we going to get this time? Are we just going to get 4,000 again? No, we're gonna get uh, 2,500. Okay, cool. Whatever, fine. That gives a grand total of 6,000. Oh, actually, no, wait, there's one more, isn't there? Um, should I do that? Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, it's freaking Sledstorm, isn't it? It's more races and stuff like that. I mean, I'll just clear, like, the first cup and that'll do it, really. It ain't easy first time, though. It definitely isn't. Also, damn it, I am, like, a couple of a quid short of getting that. Oh, boy. Never mind. Whatever options are there. Graphite bikes, sport tune up. You know what? Let's go for the second one. I don't see why not. Because it uh, increases performance and. Oh my god, I am probably critting that because my top speed has completely increased. Therefore, this is going to be hell. This is really going to be hell just trying to get through this naturally now. <laughs> As my snowmobile is going to be too overpowered after what I have just done. Oh my god. Also, this track, god damn it, it makes me feel ready for racing, it really does. The opening for it is perfect for when you're about to start it. Also, it's an Eagle Ridge, I see. This track, though, oh my god, is difficult, as you can see by the map indicated at the bottom left, which I actually don't use. I need to use that more, good grief. <laughs> oh boy, I never even noticed that until now, really. Uh, just shows you how observant I am. Also, wow, good grief, what chaos going on here. You know, it's funny how, with a, a game that has like, just four races, it can be quite, oh, oh my, it can be quite um chaotic as to what the heck goes on, even more than how chaotic it is in other races, you know, where there's more players, which doesn't really make any sense, but you know what, never mind, also, wow, I nearly fell down then. Now, if they actually took that idea from Beatle Adventure Racing with the little track bit, that's pretty cool, because I always like that bit in Beetle Adventure Racing. 
Also, I missed the rabbit. <laughs> the rabbit, though, from a distance. It doesn't even look like a rabbit. I, I swear, like, when I was a kid, I, I thought it was, like, some some sort of rubbish that I had to run over. <laughs> I'm thinking, how oh, does that give me points? But then I realised, all oh, this time as a kid, I've been killing a rabbit on a snowmobile. <laughs> Which sounds quite morbid when you're looking at it now, but... No, oh, well, you're a kid, you don't really know these things, do you? Oh my god, though, that's really close. <laughs> this is pretty much the track that will kill you. Not necessarily slow you down, but this is the one that you're going to be falling off the edge a lot for the first time and stuff like that. Although, with a bit of practice, you'll be okay. Also, I swear I grinded across that rock. Which, can you even do that on a snowmobile? <laughs> Whatever, it's a video game. Anything can happen, really, but, yeah, never mind. Also, I'm actually first with not a lot of troubles this time. But my gosh, is it annoying when you like hit the slightest bit of an edge of a rock <laughs> and then you just see your character, you know, just sort of slightly fall off and having to get back up on it again. It just wastes two seconds of your time, but it's not a bad thing because I mean, it's your fault, isn't it? You gotta balance your player, like, uh, sorry, you gotta balance like your character when he like falls off and stuff like that, you know. A lot of the fault in the game. Well, some bits can be, oh my god, why did I bounce that high and stuff? And, you know, yeah, I can agree with that kind of thing. But, half the time, there we go, I got the bunny. <laughs> good <Congrats. laughs> Yikes, this must be painful for it, but still. Oh boy. And we're actually on the second lap, you know what? Things are going pretty smooth. I'm actually surprised that on the other one I got through it first time. I mean, usually I have trouble on that one, but still. Do the computers not think though to ride up that bit of rock, rock in order to get past that bit? <laughs> oh boy. Something tells me that the computers lack a bit of common sense in this game. Oh boy. Never mind. Well, maybe that's not common sense, I mean, that's not what I would do if I was in a snowmobile. <laughs> like, I'm on the edge of a cliff, and I'm gonna freaking drive up this bit of rock. <laughs> a past the cliff, which will probably most likely kill me if I don't turn in time. And it'll work. Nah, maybe not. <laughs> Because I don't know, like, oh, can I actually make that? Yeah, I can. And fall off. Oh, boy. Never mind. I don't know, like, if you heard this earlier, though, but, like, when, um, I did the tricks and what, I noticed, like, they have these voiceovers. I know they can be pretty funny to hear as well. <laughs> as, I don't know, that's, like, just sort of the rad of the 90s, you know what I'm saying? But, my gosh. <laughs> I sort of... I'm happy that I got the upgrade as it's been going presentation, but my gosh, does it restrict my view sometimes. <laughs> like, look at this. I can't even see where I'm going after the time. Thankfully, though, because of, like, the huge aspect ratio of the game and that, I can sort of work out where I am. So, you know what? That's fine by me. Also, I'm going at, like, 41 kilometers an hour. Good grief. What the heck happened there? Oh, boy. It's things like that, you know, where you're just going to be like, what? Oh my god, can I actually get past that? No, I can't. And, holy crap, I ought to step it up a bit. <laughs> that did not go as smooth as I thought. Oh my god, I almost screwed myself up there big time. Jesus, how the heck is he not dead after that? <laughs> he just sort of went past it, and then just virtually fell off his um, snowmobile in order to get past it and stuff like that. Actually, I suppose, would you call these sleds? I know it's called sled storm, but I don't know. I mean, this is like the UK, so it might have been different. I'm not sure, really. But I just got first place at the last minute, and that was super, super close. My goodness me. Oh, boy. A new record, really? Wow, I must, have, I must be really bad at this game in general. Which I am, as you can see, so, you know. Oh, never mind. How much money we're going to get is a grand total then. But this one being a bloody big level. 3,000. That's not too bad, I guess. It'd give me uh, 7,000. Yeah, sweet. That's alright then. And now let's just advance, and it's gonna say, You have now unlocked FOD mode. Uh, fo sorry, FOG mode. <laughs> FOD mode? What the hell's that? <laughs> you are now entering new country. Save game? Um, no. <laughs> not really, because this is a one off, and I don't really see me get mad to this, plus I have my old save data on it and stuff like that, but still. Um, then after that, if you just click continue, you know, it basically just continues on with it and stuff like that, which I'm not really going to show off, because otherwise to be, it's going to go on for too long, isn't it? I mean, we're already at, like, 28 minutes, bef uh, you know, before editing and stuff like that. 
And we've we've done one cup. <laughs> oh boy. But you know what? No, no, let's just not worry about that. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about the pause music. This is also pretty sweet as well. Sounds sort of similar to um, the battle between Sonic and Shadow and Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> Look at it now. <laughs> you know, I completely forgot about that. Oh my god, wow. That wasn't even planned. Oh boy. Turn faster. Use lean when you turn. Also, like, if you mess up and there's, like, a loading screen. It tells you, like, little hints and that. I mean, I even knew that as a kid, so seeing that, I was like, oh, okay. So I know to do that next time. But, you know what, this has been one of Let's Plays of Sledge Storm for the PS1. If you like it, you can pick this up on the PS1, as this has not been put to anything else, which is rather strange, considering this is, like, one of my favourite sports games. Seriously, I love this game a lot, pretty much, for the PS1. It has a good soundtrack, you know, just good challenge, and that great physics for, like, snow and ice and stuff, while frustrating, it does make it feel a lot more exciting and, you know, high adrenaline and stuff like that. But, I don't know, this hasn't even been released on, like, the PSN, and, or, s I, I don't know, is, is this for Steam? I'm pretty sure last time I checked, this is only available for the PS1, so if you want to play this, you just gotta have a copy of the PS1 game on the disc, which is why I'm showing it off today on the original PS1 itself, hooked up and stuff like that, but still. Yeah, take care guys, I hope enjoyed this one-off. Let's Play's edition of this game, and I guess I'll see you in the other ones of stuff I've got to show off. <laughs>